Well, hello everyone. My name is Artie Quevin, and I am the founder and executive director of the Ocean Research College Academy. And I've prepared this video with the intention of telling you about the story of research at the Ocean Research College Academy to highlight the work that our students are currently doing, to showcase how our response to COVID-19 is maintaining this data stream, uh, but most importantly, to encourage you to ask questions about your place. Perhaps there's some connections about what we do to how you can ask questions about where you are. And then lastly, to encourage you to visit our showcase event that is happening on June 19th, uh, where you can see firsthand the student research um, and current work that they're doing. So when I think about place, my mind immediately goes to our study location, which is Possession Sound. And this area is now what scientists are calling a critical zone for interactions between the physical and natural worlds. In our place, it is Possession Sound from the south end of Camino Island to the south end of Whidbey Island. And it is the historic and current grounds for the Tulalip tribes. It's also the feeding areas in the springtime for a unique population of gray whales who return to this region. It's a major source of recreation for local and residents beyond our region, as well as a hub and shipping terminal for components coming into Boeing, as well as uh, individuals transiting across uh, the ferry lanes. So take a look at this place and we're gonna showcase how we endeavor to study a region and learn about it and how learning about a place builds those skills that are transferable to virtually any field. So when I highlight this gray whale population, uh, think deeply about historically how we viewed whales. Whales were a source of oil for us, a source of food, and most of the gray whales in this region were eradicated by uh, the early 1900s. And not until the uh, advent of the Endangered Species Act were they listed, uh, but they've been protected since the mid 70s and their populations rebounded in the mid 90s, 1990s. And part of the reasons they've rebounded is because they use this place uh, as a drive through When they come in and feed on the shelf of the Snohomish River estuary, which is laden with ghost shrimp, that gives them the fuel they need to make it all the way back to their Arctic uh, summer feeding grounds. So they detour in here in this region uh, during the springtime and many of our students get to see them on our cruises. And while we've named our school Orca, <laughs> there's a term in science called charismatic megafauna, which we love the big things that have charisma, but also um, they are clues that tell us what's going on, perhaps with the littler things that may not immediately draw your attention. So even though I use the hashtag whale school, I'm often directing students to the rest of our logo that shows um, how the food system is supported by plankton and those plankton are where they are because of the water chemistry. So everything at Orca revolves around this interface between fresh water and salt water and how that becomes the driver of these food change dynamics. So our students are deeply involved with sampling and collecting those parameters and then interpreting what's going on in this system. One of the things that we are doing with our students is this longitudinal research study that we call State of Possession Sound, or SOPS for short. This study uh, was created in year one or year two of ORCA to engage students in hands-on active learning to help them utilize their building mathematical skills to analyze and interpret data and to write and show the story that they are learning about place. And this is a myriad of sample locations that we have gone and visited and collected data from uh, over the course of our 15 year study. And to do this, uh, our students go out on a boat uh, we have a beautiful research vessel funded by the National Science Foundation that we've had for the last five years. And students have been on board for 172 cruises. So every time we leave the dock, we count that as a cruise. 
And if you would like to learn more about what our students have done and are continuing to do, um, please join us for a virtual Possession Sound Student Showcase and Talks on June 19th. Um, and you can visit the website listed here below. And we'll have a group of first year students presenting their research and a group of second year students that use this study as the foundation to continue to ask and attempt to answer questions about this region. So finding out about where we live, how, why it matters, and particularly what's happening right now has led me to continue to collect data even though our students aren't here. And so for the last, um, the last three cruises have one been a staff cruise and then two have been executed by me to continue to maintain this data stream to see what's happening in response to the seasonality of this time. It, are there questions that we can ask and attempt to answer about what's happening when we're not looking? And three, what's happening to the populations of the marine birds and the marine mammals that we study? So every time we go out on our own research vessel, we look at a suite of oceanographic parameters that are loosely based on other agencies that study this region and always the big drivers are water chemistry. So what is the temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen, pH, chlorophyll concentration, and turbidity of these waters? So every time we go out, we profile to determine what those are. And these parameters determine where we sample for the plankton assemblage. So these two profiles of temperature and salinity represent both a halocline and a thermocline with these density gradients that slow down the sinking rate of plankton. So I'm going to tow the plankton net at this graph right around five meters to capture the representative plankton tow uh, from these waters. And all of this is assembled into a part of a longitudinal research projects, project that our students continue to build on year after year, comparing both spatially from location to location and temporally season to season, uh, what previous students and current students have found. So if you do not already, please follow us on Instagram to get highlight snippets of what's going on in this region. So I really want to thank Foundry 10 for the support for this video and which am doing the editing, which is not in my skill set, although I'm developing a broader skill set uh, during this COVID-19 out, uh, outbreak. And so I just encourage you to learn more about our students' work um, by visiting us at our virtual Possession Sound Student Showcase and Talks and enjoy the day. Thank you. Wait, do the high five again because I missed it. <laughs>